My name is Josh Peck, host of Peck Report on Daily Renegade. I used to suffer with chronic pain from a degenerative bone disease. I was hopelessly addicted to opioids without any end in sight. But then I discovered Kratom and CBD. I am no longer on prescription drugs and I have more energy and pain relief than ever before. Kratom and CBD have given me my life back without draining my bank account. If you too would like some minor to major pain relief, Kratom and CBD might be for you. Either click on the links in the description below this video or go to dailyrenegade.com on the top left banner or right side ad and check out Tropic Health Kratom and CBD. Use promo code HEALTH20 for 20% off your order and get your life back today. Unless there is some secret pre-interview I don't know about, I believe this is our last pre-interview for the film Silent Cry. We have an interview, a pre-interview with Thomas Dunn. All that and more on today's Peck Report. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. So uh, Thomas Dunn, he is um, the filmmaker that's involved with Detestable, if you have seen that. He is also a host of Through the Black, which we host here on uh, Daily Renegade. So if you're a member of Daily Renegade, you're familiar with Tom Dunn. He's a great guy, and he is in the film Silent Cry that I uh, wrote, edited, and directed. Silent Cry about the darker side of child sex trafficking and and you know you would think what could possibly the darker side be isn't that already dark enough well there's a whole satanic agenda behind that involving satanic ritual abuse and many more things uh and tom dunn is in the movie because he works with people who come out of satanic ritual abuse so uh without further ado here is part one of my pre-interview. Again, this is an interview that's not in the film. This is the interview I did before the film uh, in order to get a sense of uh, you know, what he was going to say, what the guests were going to say, so I could help construct the, the flow of the film. Here is the pre-interview, the first part, with Tom Dunn. Enjoy. All right, Tom Dunn, can you introduce yourself and give us some background on your work up to this date? Um, yeah. Just as you said, my name is Tom Dunn, and I, uh, among many things, I'm a filmmaker, I'm a dad, I'm a husband, and I used to teach Sunday school, but uh, I, um, I have been working uh, under the mentorship of Russ Dizdar for about uh, 11, going on 12 years now, and it's not anything that I was ever looking to do. I just wanted to make a movie because I thought it would be scary. And I had never planned on working directly with survivors of uh, uh, ritual abuse or survivors of uh, human trafficking or anything like that. I, I, I love the Lord, and, um, but all, the only thing I want to do is go to church. I didn't want to do anything else outside of that. And um, my, uh, my plans uh, changed, and uh, after working with Russ uh, for so many years, my, my plan was to immediately make a film, and um, that, that kind of changed. Russ, uh, Russ kind of took me under his wing, and he said, hey, uh, you know, research this, check this out, come with me on this trip. So all of that stuff I didn't realize was, um, was training me and equipping me to be able to do what I'm doing now, which is, uh, you know, we just made three films. The first one, Detestable, which is about, excuse me, the subject of uh, ritual abuse, and we are we're involved on a excuse me on a daily basis 
of, uh, of exposing this issue and trying to reach out to people that are, um, that are struggling with this. So, and I can go on and on, but, um, you, you tell me. So great. Yeah, that's great. Um, in your, in your work, have you come across a connection between the occult child sex trafficking and, uh, pedophilia? Yeah, there's a definite, there's a definite connection. And there's so many different ways that you can that you can talk about that. Like, I mean, there's a connection between the occult and drug trafficking. Mm -hmm. OK, so, uh, you know, the the drug traffickers, they um, they look for dark spirituality or the occult and they uh, they do rituals and summon demonic presence to give them power to be able to do what they're doing and to not get caught. And the same thing, it goes hand in hand, really, with um with uh, sex trafficking and ritual abuse, uh, there's there's a direct connection. And when we're talking about uh, Satanism, the underground stuff, and there's different denominations of Satanism, and I can explain that if you're interested. But when we're talking about the underground stuff, you cannot separate the child pornography, the the sexual abuse from their practices. It's ingrained in there, and it's it's what they love to do. It sounds crazy to say that because it's so, for us, it's just so foreign. And what we love to do is we love to protect children. We love to nurture children. And, uh, you know, we love to do good things. Uh, they think that they're doing good by abusing children and by taking away their innocence. And, you know, even even the extreme things like the sacrifice of children. But, you know, this is shocking to us, but it shouldn't be because the Bible covers this issue and people have done this uh politicians you know have done this uh world leaders this is all this has all happened uh all throughout history so it shouldn't shock us but it does and um anyway there is a direct connection between the occult satanism and the abuse of children and we're seeing it even um even really uh uncloak these days because we're seeing open the open sexualization of children through movements like the LGBTQ, which, you know, there's a, there's a connection there. Uh, you know, the the um, the left or, um, uh, you know, I mean, you, you you can't talk about this issue without getting political. Right. The left or the um, what am I trying to say? The feminist movement is is directly connected to the occult. We see that, you know, uh, we see that out on the front lines because witches show up at the abortion clinics, the feminist, and they do rituals. I have it on video. They do rituals right in the parking lot, you know. Uh, so it's yeah, it's all connected. And uh, it's almost like um, they have a checklist of uh, evil things to do. And they're like, OK, we want to <laughs> we want to take, you know, we want to take up this cause, the, the feminism, the, the, uh, the abuse of children with the LGBT, the ritual abuse, check, 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 you know. Um, and for us, you know, that's, that's really foreign to us because we want to protect kids. Absolutely. Um, by your definition, what is SRA or satanic ritual abuse? Satanic ritual abuse is exactly what it sounds like. It's abuse of children um, sexual abuse, physical abuse, torture, that sort of thing in the setting of a satanic ritual. Um, that can look like a lot of different things, but just think of any movie that you might have seen, could have been on TV, where there are people in robes standing around an altar and there might be a person on there. Um, Hollywood has done you know, a pretty good job of portraying this. It's not always like that, but we have testimony after testimony after testimony of people describing this. So it's sexual abuse in the setting of a satanic ritual with the purpose of summoning a demon and to demonize that person or to gain power to send it out or to, to gain power for them. And uh, it can also be um, a lot of these, uh, a lot of occultists or I feel like I'm, I'm whitewashing it when I say occultists, Satanists, you know, the undergrounders, the Luciferians. Uh, they will 
um, they will try to darken the heart of the people they're initiating. So if they can get them to drink blood or even be involved in cannibalism, and this person is a banker or a businessman, that person is going to be ruthless when they go out there and they're doing their deals. You know, I mean, after you've uh, after you've partaken in the cannibalism of a child, then there's not, you know, uh, it's easy to lie or cheat or steal. You know, that's nothing. So. Um, broadly, what importance do, uh, does perverse sexual acts have in the occult? You know, um, yeah, the, the purpose I think is, is a few different things. Um, again, to, um, to completely pervert God's plan for sexuality. Okay. They want to come against that. And that's one of the number one the number one things that they love to do, and they hold this up there on a pedestal. It's like they worship this perverse sexuality. And it, I, if they understood the perfection of God's plan for sexuality, um, I, I th- you know, I would like to think that um, that they would uh, they would turn away because uh, what they're worshiping and what they're chasing after is just such a letdown. Okay, whether we're looking at it in the form of um, promiscuity or pornography, it's a letdown, you know? So those are like um, maybe what we would call lighter manifestations and what they're doing. Really, it all leads to the abuse of children. It really does. And we're seeing that come out more and more with, uh, with what's happening with uh, the trans movement and the sexualization of children. It's just... Um, I, I shouldn't be shocked, but I'm constantly shocked. I'm like, I cannot believe they're doing this. So the purpose of it is, again, uh, they use it as a form of worship to worship their master, you know, the ones that believe that they're serving Lucifer, and it's blasphemy. They love blaspheming God and the cross and uh, anything that has to do with God, and this is one of the ways, you know, that they use to do that. So it's, it's abuse. It splits the mind of the children. Um, you know, it, uh, children, obviously not even adults should be going through this stuff, but when you, um, abuse a child to, you know, uh, to an extreme like this, it really, uh, tears them up psychologically, spiritually, you know, and even physically specifically, uh, for what purpose is sexual abuse used in satanic ritual abuse? Um, specifically, like what do they get uh, out of it? Yeah. You know, they're they're turned over to the dark, you know, uh, so much that they get some kind of uh, of happiness or pleasure out of this. What they think is is pleasure. So um, and it's maybe you know it's not not only do they think that they're getting um, pleasure out of it for them, but they get pleasure out of destroying children. You know, and it's so. It's so crazy for us to even say that out loud, but um, I, I can easily say that the left or the feminist or you know what, whoever you want to put in that blank right there, they get pleasure out of knowing that abortions are taking place. Yeah. So it's why would it be a far stretch to say they love the destruction of, of humans, you know, of, of little children and destroying their innocence. So. Um, they they get on the spiritual side. It's a um, it's to appease demonic presence and to do a ritual to summon that you know uh, to summon summon that presence and they can um, do a transfer transference you know um, and uh, Josh this can take place even not in the setting of a of a demonic ritual where somebody who would be a rapist or a pedophile has nothing to do with the occult maybe. But he is uh, he could be demonized in some way and he will rape a child. And through what we call transference, um, you know, if it was happening between two consenting adults, that can even happen. OK, so uh, a person can become oppressed. They um, they have a, a spiritual transference of, uh, you know, of a demon from, you know, what we would call uh, in some ways soul ties, things like that, you know, um, I don't want to. I don't want to complicate uh, matters too much, but these these are all um, consequences of perverting and disobeying God's plan for sexuality, and the dark side does it purposely. 
Okay. I mean, just, just the disobedience, you know, of people that are promiscuous or, you know, people that they wouldn't even consider it promiscuity, that it's just a normal way of to live, you know, and people have, um, go into marriage carrying all this baggage of all their, you know, their, uh, sexual activity or whatever. And it can be a nightmare, but we're talking about the purposeful destruction of kids for the summoning of demonic presence. And they, they get pleasure out of it. They love pleasing Satan. They love it. And they know the destruction of children pleases Satan. So that's why they do it. Uh, why do you believe uh, certain occult circles have a specific, an, an interest in children specifically? Um, well, for, for several reasons. They they have they they don't believe, um, you know, as Christians do, they don't believe children have any value. Mm -hmm. So, again, they want to they love the destruction of kids. They want to recruit them. They want to train them. OK, um, if you're going to um, uh, split somebody. OK, and I'm talking about something we haven't brought up yet, but I'm talking about um the, the consequences of satanic ritual abuse of somebody that's usually less than five years old, the trauma has such a impact on their lives that um, their psyche can't handle it and their psyche will split, okay? So that makes that person pliable. You can program that person and uh, you can get them to grow up and do the same thing, okay? One of the cases that we're dealing with um, in, um, you know, for out of the UK, the children's testimonies are, I mean, there's so much uh, material out there. They said that they were being trained. Their dad was, the, you know, was a generation. Uh, their grandmother was a generation. They're going to be the next generation. And they're supposed to do this to their kids. So it's, uh, you know, train up a child. You know, this is a scripture that Christians use. Train up a child in the way that it'll go and they will not depart from it. Well, um you know, they believe in um, brainwashing, programming, abusing, splitting, you know, and, and getting this person ready to be the next generation. So one of the reasons we could talk about more, but. Sure. Uh, now, uh, without without naming names, um, what are some of the, the most horrific and shocking things that you've heard from victims of SRA? All right. We do have a lot more to this interview a lot more information that i think you will enjoy but for that you got to be a member like i've said before don't complain to me complain to youtube if you hate that you have to be a paying member at a website to get exclusive content i am right there with you i hate it too i never wanted to do this i for years i was always able to give you free information and free videos and all of a sudden youtube started deleting our videos and they started making it impossible for Christian or conservative content creators to do anything on their platform. So because of that, we had to make our own thing. No, I'm not rich. Um, I, I, I can't afford to pay for uh, everything involved with giving you free videos. You know, you, you got to pay for the housing. There, there's just a lot of things that you have to pay for in those regards, and I can't afford to do it. So because of that, the best way we were able to uh, create to make it work was to create a subscription-based service. So you can go to dailyrenegade.com. It does help a very important ministry. I like to think it's important. I'm a little biased. It is my own ministry. But you can go to dailyrenegade.com. Interesting story about the name Daily Renegade. Tom Dunn came up with that name. He was actually the one that came up with the, the, the renegade part of Daily Renegade. Uh, but you can do that at dailyrenegade.com, $10, $10 a month or $100 a year. I suggest getting the $100 a year because you get two months for free that way. So it's a, it's, it's a really good deal. So go do that at dailyrenegade.com and you'll be able to get the second part of Tom Dunn's very important uh, pre-interview, which is just packed with information. All right, everybody. Um, for members, hang on the line. We got a lot more to get to. Everybody else, thank you so much for viewing. Don't forget to subscribe. Uh, don't forget to follow us. And also remember, you can create uh, an account at dailyrenegade.com for free. Now, paying members, you do get exclusive access early. You get early access. So while everybody else on YouTube, you know, they're getting these videos on Thursday. For members, they already saw this on Wednesday. So you can get early access to the full videos uh, at dailyrenegade.com. So make sure you do that.
Everybody viewing for free, thank you so much. Uh, we love you all. Members, hang on the line. Everybody else, we will talk to you next time. Take care and God bless.